the last minute on every single one of those matches is the difference between you winning the match, coming second or third, because there will always be somebody that will catch a fish in that last minute. Preparation is first and foremost. It, without the preparation, you cannot perform like any sport. You have to be mentally prepared <clears throat> and you have to be physically prepared. And you also have to have a really good idea of what you might expect. Fishing is the hardest sport in the world. It's simply the hardest sport in the world. The reason for that is we can't see the object ball. You can see the football, you can see the golf ball, you can see the cricket ball. All of the sports you can see the object. When you throw darts you can see you can see the board. You can't see the fish. So we have to develop skills and baits to catch things that we can't see. And that's why it's the hardest sport in the world. That's why it's difficult and that's why the best anglers understand how fish feed. They understand when they feed, time of the day they feed, what baits they, they want to be on. Now we're in a sport where we're dealing with nature and as we know nature changes minute by minute so you have to ensure that you're fully prepared for any of those changes that may occur during that five hour period when you're competing the better anglers are prepared and for that reason they can adapt and change their frame of mind their thinking their feeding patterns their approaches during that period of time in order to adapt with how nature is at that present time and that moment. So when I'm preparing, I'm thinking that I need to ensure that I've got everything done, everything prepared from the bait preparation, from the tackle, from my mental preparation. And also I want to be thinking about where I am, where I'm going, what venue I'm at. Have I been to this venue before? I always keep a diary. Ever since I started fishing, I write a, a diary every year. And each day I go fishing, I write and document down the water temperature, the air temperature, the wind direction, what peg I was on, what fish I caught. And that allows me to stay in tune with a particular season, a particular day, particular conditions and a particular peg and in conjunction with the venue I'm, I'm at. So I can then relate to that if I may have had a year gap between me fishing a specific venue, I can then pick up a diary, open up the page, and it, then it all comes back to me. Now the interesting thing is, because although I've done it thousands and thousands of times, I remember everything. And I think people that are passionate about what they love doing, and they enjoy it, 
they don't really need to document it down but those key little things that you may forget or that may drift your mind what diameter hook length was i using what hook was i using what was the best hook bait on the day and little things like that make a massive difference and can literally give you a, an hour's head start above everybody else so it, the preparation to me is the be all and end all of becoming a better angler So that's, <laughs> that's, I think that was one of my first fish that I ever caught. I think I was nine that year. And flask again, massive roach, one pound 15. That's the biggest roach I've ever caught. Down there. And it was all about just taking a few pictures really then. It was the only way of remembering those special moments. Uh, yeah, just even looking at them now brings back some fond memories. Oh yeah, there's a few when we said this is Dam Flask, one of the first places I ever fished um, and spent so many years fishing up there on a, on a weekly basis. We're at the beautiful Dam Flask Reservoir, just on the outskirts of Sheffield. As a youngster, caught my first ever bream here, roach, perch. So yeah, holds some very fond memories. So there was a time you used to come up here and uh, there used to be literally loads and loads of people. There's not a single angler on the reservoir today. And this is a typical day up at Danfoss nowadays. Definitely not what it used to be, but to me, I could sit up here on my own all day and still enjoy every minute of it. Very special. In this one. Oh, that like oh, we're on the. No, there's there. Where, now where are those taken? Those are taken. No, that's at Hallcroft. There you are. Yep. There you are. I that's, remember that. That's when you went fishing on North Pier at Blackpool. Yeah. That's the rods, the rods blocking the, the rods face. Hard in your face, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. This is when we went fishing. In Pat's doing Cornwall, uh, and you were very keen on this fish on sea fishing them, and we you went with me the first day. Uh, there we are, in, in a lovely warm summer. a lovely summer's day, oh, and there, there with all the fish you caught. Well, hang on, what's what's in here? Just a minute. Let's see what's here. A lovely one on Damplas there. Yeah, it's an old one. And you did win a big open there, didn't you? I did, when I was very, very young. What? 13, I was. 13, you, you yeah. won the... Uh, Pennine Championships. The Pennine Championships. Yeah. I can still remember the day now. I had three pound, eight ounce. I had a perch and three roach. Uh, and I can't tell you how elated I was. Fishing against adults that were very good, very good anglers. And then all of a sudden this youngster comes along and uh, and cleans up on this day and it's always so funny. But yeah, I think we can all recollect our first match win and I don't think I'll ever forget that day. at such a beautiful place as well. Before the start of the match, it's that excitement of what peg am I going to draw? Are there going to be any fish there? Is the wind direction right for it? What's the weather going to be like? 
there's so many variables with fishing. So all of that is bundled into that excitement. And I'd say the crucial part is we sit down, we have breakfast, we have a chat, we have a laugh, and we talk not necessarily about fishing, but just things in general. But then it comes to the last minute, two minutes before the draw, the organiser comes up with all the peg numbers in the bag. Now it's serious. Now all you're thinking about is, I know what the weather's going to be like, I've investigated that. I've got an idea of my plan, depending on where I draw. But as I put my hand in that bag, that is your opportunity as an angler to think, do you know what? I've got a really good chance. I know that peg's in there. I could pull it out. And if it works and you do pull it out, then that's brilliant. 21's the worst. Oh. But it's that anticipation of not knowing where you're going to be. And then all of a sudden, everything's revealed in front of you. International angling sensation. 20, I bet it's 21. 21. Yeah! Unbelievable. I can't believe I've drawn there. You asked for it? I was joking. Well, it's fate, isn't it? The draw's taken place. The winter's set in. Really, really cold night. Uh, I'm, I was mentally thinking about really any peg apart from 21. And I've drawn 21. <laughs> so, and like what I said last night, I've just got to see what happens. My head's ticking now, thinking about what I'm going to be doing. It's inevitable that the lower pegs will mostly win the match. If I manage to frame from where I am, I'll be absolutely over the moon. And that's the best way of looking at it. That if I get third from there, or they pay the top three out today, there's no way I can go to that peg today thinking I'm going to win it. It's not going to happen. It will be an absolute miracle if that happens. So I'm thinking about what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've got two approaches in my head. I'm going to be doing a lot of bomb work today because it's so cold. The fish won't be moving around a lot. And when I get to my peg, you'll see that I've got a lot of space, you know, where you'd think actually there'd be a lot of fish there. And there will be some fish somewhere, but it may take a while to actually find the odd fish. So I'm going to get my head down and fish for the small fish today with maggots. Um, so that's my plan. Whereas everybody else will be fishing bomb, bread, corn for the bigger fish, because there's a larger percentage of fish herded up in the areas where I've already mentioned which are the better pegs. So uh, go to a peg and let's see what happens. The average match time is five hours. Those vital minutes before the start of the match, before the whistle goes, where you're on that starting line, you're prepared, you're mentally prepared, you've thought about what you're going to be doing, and you have to make the right decisions to do well and perform. And that is why the same names are always at the top of the list. And that's what I always want to try and aspire to. I always want to get the best out of my thoughts, my decisions, and my actions. Last half hour in this match will be uh, interesting. Because I'm not in a good area, that'll be like the, the chance for me to make up for lost time in the start of the match. Or the middle of the match, really. The fish will be coming into my peg from the right. Perfect, perfect. 
as soon as that match starts and the whistle goes, the clock is ticking and you have to make the key decisions. 10 seconds. I think it's really important to have an open mind when you're fishing because your decisions on your day might not be the right decisions and there could be somebody next year that could be doing it better than you in a way, fishing a different way, catching more fish. For example, if I'm fishing 30 metres, somebody's fishing 15 and catching, I can come into 15. So I'm watching other anglers to learn on the day where the fish might be to help me during that competition. So although I'm always focused on what I'm doing, I'm always got a, like a massive overview of who's catching on the lake, what are they catching on, what are they doing? And sometimes communicating with people during a match, and it is really important. What are you on, bomb and bread? We've got lots and lots of baits nowadays. And if somebody's catching fish and you are not, it might be just the color of the hook bait. Something as daft as that, you might have a, a, like a, a red bait on and they might be on a yellow. If someone's catching some fish, you have to watch them when they're winding in to see the colour of the bait. And just by keeping an eye on other anglers can massively change how you approach a peg and how you catch those fish at that present time in the match. I've got to go on pole because I've been feeding it for three hours now. There are many elements when it comes to changes. It could be the wind, it could be the air temperature, it could be the air pressure. And over the years, um, one thing I learned, especially with fishing, is fish are so susceptible to air pressure. So being a good angler isn't necessarily about actually picking the right approach whether it's feeder bomb waggler pole but it's understanding how the fish want to be caught as opposed to how you want to catch them and it can literally change second by second throughout that five hour period and a lot of it is dictated by air pressure so the elements are really important and you have to stay in touch with nature you have to stay in tune with nature and because the wind is blowing down this end of the lake which is very rare but all of a sudden there's a few fish moving in the quietest area of the lake 
fish are part of nature like anything wildlife moves away from human movement and there seem to be a few fish moving right down in that bottom corner where it's nice and peaceful so I've had to set up another rod to see if I can catch a few fish from down there if it's going to work it's going to work within the first three casts I can't afford to stick on it all day because I've already got enough options in front of me and this is what I'm on about where you have to change your plan according to where the fish are you might have an idea of what you're doing at the start but as the day progresses things change, the weather change, conditions change and fish move, fish have fins and you have to adapt and that's what I've had to do I'm just hoping that if I get a bite in the first two or three casts it will completely change my frame of mind and my approach for the rest of the I've got three hours left the clock's ticking and it's at this point in the match where it's absolutely crucial for me to make the right decisions As you get older, you get wiser. I hope I'm a little bit wiser than what I was when I was younger. But you don't know what's going to happen. It, you know, you haven't got a clue what's going to happen. You've got an idea and your experience is the only thing that you can go on. From an outside perspective, as we all know, I think it's classed as, oh, you just sit there watching a float. But it's definitely hard work, passion, drive, preparation, concentration, determination. It's all those key aspects bundled into one that really do make you a better person on and off the bank side. Um, and without doubt, it's determination that has made me a, a, a better person and a better angler. I've worked really hard for what I've achieved. I've put time and effort, and that comes from actually, I think anything that you love, that you get an enjoyment, you get satisfaction, and as a result, you get a reward. Um, then you have to be passionate about it, and I'm passionate about my fishing, simply because I find it so interesting. You know, I've been lucky enough over the years to turn my hobby into my job. As a result of that, I take that really, really seriously because I want to achieve the best I possibly can within five hours. In a way, match fishing is not a race, but it's a marathon. So, as bizarre as it sounds, although you've got five hours to make key decisions on how the fish want to be caught, as regards to a match angler, that's how you look at fishing. It's not how you want to catch fish, it's about how the fish want to be caught. So you have to make the best out of those crucial times in the match. In the last two minutes, I'd say is far more important than the first two minutes because it's at the time of the day where the fish are feeding more confidently because you've had five hours or four hours and 58 minutes 
to build up your peg and get those fish competing. So in the last two minutes, you could catch more than you could catch in the first hour of the match. And when you get that fish, when you're sat there for five hours and it goes round or it goes under, in the last few minutes, it's probably one of the biggest satisfactions in fishing. Because one, you've caught a fish, two, it, it might win you money, and three, it usually upsets all the other fishermen. And that's the best feeling. Been unlucky because I've lost a fish in a snag against the island with some tethered line. Only a small F1, but my crucial fish that I think could cost me winning the match was that big fish that I've snagged down the edge because that was a big carp. And if you get a 10 pound carp in the middle of winter, that's an hour's fishing. You know, uh, that's five or six F1s that might take you an hour to catch if you're very lucky. That could cost me that today. So I think I've had a really good day. I've enjoyed it. The timing's been right. I've figured out where the fish were really quickly. I'd like to think I've got 70 pound. If I've got 70 pound plus, I'll be really happy with that. So see what happens at the weigh-in. 35.14 Have I won it? Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers for your coaching. <laughs> Can't believe it! <laughs>